Amen. We did announce that we were going to have uh, Prophet Renita with us today, the 29th of September. Um, so we didn't do a reminder, but um, it's going to be a little bit different this morning. Um, she started um, teaching and um, there was an activation that took place when we did the redigging of the wells. And um, and uh, there's a few when we talked about um, reaching out to people, prophesying, and we did some of that. I was doing some activation or reminding us to keep that going, um, especially in, in the core group. Um, this is the purpose of it. And so she's going to do a teaching this morning or evening time where you are um, for the next half an hour. And then we're going to have some activation for the, for the following half an hour um, before we go into our devotion this morning. So I'd encourage us to sit up, be alert to receive the teaching um, and prophecy and um, activation. Yes, and um, and I'm going to hand over to Prophet Renita. Thank you for staying up um, and being with us at this late time of the day. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, please help me to appreciate Prophet Renita. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I pray that you all are well and that you are awake and ready to be activated on tonight. Um, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Praise, uh, for having me in things. And I am ready for everything that God is about to do tonight. Um, just to share something before I get started, uh, the Lord was showing me that um, there are going to be some in the room. Uh, he was just uh, just showing me some of the faces that would be in the room tonight, and he was showing me that um, that the teaching and the activations that we would do tonight will cause revival. Uh, the Lord was showing me someone who um, who. Uh, isn't new to the prophetic, um, but I saw someone's voice who um, was used to prophesying, but somewhere along the line, uh, you stopped prophesying and um, it was almost like you're, you were scared of your voice. And the Lord is going to cause a revival on tonight to many of your voices, and he's going to cause the dry bones to live again. So if that is you, uh, I just pray that God would cause his fire to come upon you now in the name of Jesus. And everything that he has for you would just spring a new well of glory, a new well of power, a new well that God is pouring out on tonight. And I pray that this blesses you tonight. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and ping people in the room um, that you believe that would benefit uh, from tonight uh, that that may need to be stirred up. Just go ahead and ping a couple of people in the room um, if you can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a short teaching uh, of activation um, that the Lord was just guiding me um, and just showing me um, even as I was preparing. And then uh, we will dive into um, into the activations. So get ready. Come on now, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Was that a shift? Come on, so what is an activation? What is an activation? If you were to look up the definition of activation, it is defined as the action or process of making something active or operative. It means to make something such as a molecule reactive or more reactive. It means to convert uh, uh, into a biologically active derivative. Activation means to make a substance radioactive. Uh, activation also means to treat, to treat so as to improve 
uh, as adsorb absorptive properties. It also means to set up or formally institute with the necessary personnel and equipment. And, uh, another definition of activation uh, also uh, means to put an individual or unit on active duty. To put an individual or unit on active duty. So that's what we're going to do on tonight. When we're doing activations, we're not just stirring, just, just stirring up the prophetic gift, the prophetic whales. You're going to shift into, into active duty. You're going to shift into who God is calling you to be as a prophetic soldier. This doesn't this doesn't mean that you have to be a prophet to be a prophetic soldier. God wants all of his people to prophesy. So even as he's activating you, just visualize that that you are coming into active duty, whatever that looks like. Just turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. And it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So hearing in this scripture, uh, hearing through the word of Christ in the voice of God activates faith. Let me say that again. Hearing through the word of Christ and the voice of God activates faith. When you are activated, one agent collides with another and it reacts and responses. When you are activated, what was once dormant comes alive. When you are activated, when I hear the word of God, it activates my faith. Faith activates healing. Faith activates healings. <laughs> Faith activates miracles. Faith activates breakthrough. So our faith activates different things and it causes one agent to collide with another to react and respond. Let me read Romans chapter 10 verse number 17 again. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Hearing is an announcement, okay? Hearing is an announcement and word and a, a word in this scripture can also be defined as a speech. So Romans, again, Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Hearing is an announcement and the, in the word and word in this scripture can also be defined as a speech, declaration, command, mandate, direction, a promise, prediction, or prophecy. Okay. So what is the purpose of prophetic activations? Conducting prophetic activations causes your prophetic muscles to grow. Just like when you, you know, go to the gym, uh, you work, you work out uh, to strengthen, you know, different mu muscles. And the more that you go to the gym, the stronger that you become. Even if you went to the gym and you focus on one area and you just focus on that one area over and over again that those muscles will react and respond to the activations that you are doing when you're when you're putting in that work so that's the same thing like prophetic activations it it causes the more that you are activating and you're fanning that flame and you're you're working those prophetic muscles, they will continue to expand and grow. OK, so when I first started prophesying, my 
my prophetic muscles look different 10 years ago than they do today. So if I didn't stir up my gift as someone who was called as a uh, prophetic voice and prophet, if I didn't stir up my gift, if I didn't work those prophetic muscles, I would be uh, in the same exact place that I was 10 years ago uh, here today. But since I was working those prophetic muscles, working and uh, uh, releasing what God was showing me as a seer, releasing what God was uh, 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 releasing to me, even, uh, you know, through opening up my mouth and allowing the Holy Spirit to feel it, I was working those prophetic muscles. So activations are are like a gym the more that you the more that you go forth the more that you step out the more that you activate those muscles it will stretch you encourage you challenge you build you shift you greater in various ways it will shift you in various ways prophetic activations release us in greater prophetic dimensions Activations are not designed to make everybody in here a prophet. So that's not what we're doing. When we're doing prophetic activations, we're not, you know, we're not just trying to uh, make ourselves so keen and precise and, uh, you know, trying to make ourselves into prophets and all of these other things. They are, that's not why we're, that's not why we do prophetic activations. Activations are designed to stir you to grow in whatever level you are called to. So even if you're not a prophet, you should be you should be working and you should be stepping out to to prophesy. You should be stepping out to do prophetic activations. You shouldn't say, oh, well, I'm not a prophet. I, you know, I, I'm not going to do any prophetic activations, you know. God wants everybody to prophesy. So activations are not exclusive to the prophet. They're not exclusive to the prophet. So activations are designed to stir you to grow in whatever level you are called to. Some of you in this room may be called to the office, to the prophetic office. You may very well be called as a prophet. Some of you may have the gift of prophecy where it's a gift, but it's not the office of, you know, of the prophet. You have the gift. And some of you may experience the spirit of prophecy when you go into an atmosphere, when you go to an event, your church services, ministry engagements, and the Holy Spirit releases the spirit of prophecy over, uh, corporately over a meeting where you will begin to be stirred up because everybody in the room was began to be stirred up. And as a result of, of just being filled with the Holy Ghost. So whatever level you are called to, God desires for all of us to prophesy. He desires for all of us to prophesy. So even in the chat, just say, I will prophesy. I will prophesy. Just put that in the chat. I will prophesy. I will prophesy. Activations stir all of us to move in faith. As believers, we are called to live in the realm of faith. What do I mean by that? Turn your Bibles to Hebrews uh, chapter number 11, verse number 1. Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one. It says, now faith is the assurance of what we hope for and the certainty of what we do not see. Now faith is the assurance of what we hope for and the certainty of what we do not see. So assurance in this scripture means confidence. It also means trust, being sure, essence, a standing under, an assumed position, a vouching, a pledged 
profession. When God causes us to activate, uh, to activate, there is an assurance that comes through faith that causes us to stand in the gap as ambassadors announcing the certainty of a thing we do not see. So when we are prophesying, we're standing in a place and trusting that God is going to fill our mouths. When we prophesy, it activates our faith and we're standing in the paradigms of faith in the assurance that God is going to speak through us, that God is going to send, show us a vision, that God is going to give us a word, that God is going to reveal his secrets, the secrets within his, his heart for his sons and daughters, for his people, for a nation, that when we open up our mouths or we, we work those prophetic muscles, there is an assurance that God is going to uh, uh, release something to us. There's a confidence. There's a vouching. There's a pledge profession. There's a, there's a trust that you have. When I prophesy, I know that there, there, there's, uh, there's such a trust that I don't even have to think about it. Prophesying for me is like breathing. What do I mean by that? Because when you breathe, you don't have to think about breathing. You, you, you shouldn't have to think about breathing. So with me working those prophetic muscles, prophesying is like breathing. There is a trust. There's an assurance. There's a confidence that when I open up my mouth, God is going to release heaven. When God causes us to activate, there is an assurance that, that comes through faith that causes us to stand in the gap as ambassadors announcing the certainty of a thing we do not see. We don't see it. The thing about it is, and what's amazing is, there's nothing new to God. There's nothing new to the Holy Spirit. When, when God releases a word to us, he already knows. Even if we don't know it, he already knows all, all, all we're doing when we're prophesying when releasing a word or a vision is we're revealing what's already written in our book. We're re he's revealing who he has called us to be in another shift, in another dimension, in a new place and things like that. So although it's new to us, there's nothing new to God. And there is such a certainty of a thing that we do not see that when I open my open up my mouth, I am certain that God is going to release his mysteries in a place. He's going to release his mysteries over people. He's going to release his mysteries to a nation, his mysteries to a climate, his mysteries to an atmosphere, his mysteries to all oh, Rabbi Sakaya, his mysteries to every single place that he's not going to cause you to be in a place of uncertainty. But there is an announcing that is taking place. There's an exchange that is taking place in the thing that we do not see. When I prophesy over someone, I might see it in the spirit realm. It hasn't even come, it may not have, it hasn't come to pass yet. But there's a certainty that I know that I know that I know that I know that my father is releasing his mysteries for his children. Stay with me. Second, uh, just turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. It says, for we walk by faith. See, you, 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 uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. You see that reoccurrence of faith, 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 faith. You have to have faith to prophesy. You have to have faith to work those prophetic muscles. 
So for we walk by faith and not by sight. If I'm con if I'm conducting my life by faith, I'm not walking by what is presented to me daily with my natural eyes. <laughs> If I'm operating in the storehouses of heaven where God releases a word over me and says, I have given you access to the storehouses. I'm not waiting on something to happen in the natural in order to align what is ha that what is already transpired in the heavenly places. I'm not waiting. There can be chaos going around me. There can be storms going around me, but... I am in the assurance and the certainty of a thing I do not see. <laughs> I'm operating in the realm that I cannot see with my natural eyes. Faith is a key that causes me to exercise and activate, activate my prophetic muscles. To activate something is to start it off, trigger it, or set it in motion. When I'm activating something, there's a triggering that is happening. There's a shaking that is happening. Trigger means a small device. Trigger means a small device that releases a spring or catch. And so sets, so it sets off a, a mechanism, especially in order to fire a gun. So when you think about a trigger, you know, in a gun, there's a spring, there's a spring or a catch. And so, uh, and so it sets off a mechanism, especially in order to fire a gun. When we usually, when we hear trigger, we oftentimes hear this in a negative context or connotation, like, oh, that triggered me. Oh, that. You know, that uh, that caused me to trigger in this or trigger in that. But today, the Holy Spirit is going to trigger us in the prophetic and cause us to spring forth so we can set it off in, uh, in 2023, 2024 and beyond. Because when we're working those prophetic muscles, we don't want to just hear God day to day. We don't want to just hear God week to week. We don't just want to hear God month to month. We don't just want to hear God for the rest of the year. We don't even just want to hear God for the year. Why not listen? Why not work those prophetic muscles to hear God for the next five years, to hear God for the next 10 years, to hear God for the next generation, to hear God for the next 50 years? The Holy Spirit is going to trigger us in the prophetic and cause us to spring forth on tonight. So even if you're not, even if you're not new to the prophetic, sometimes people need to be rekindled. We just went, you know, we just went through a, a shaking the past few years. And then the, and, and, and we just keep hearing uh, words of, of, of another shaking that is going to come that's on the brink of a shake. But why not? Open up your mouth and prophesy. Why not prophesy against those curses? Why not activate yourself and, and, and shut the gates of hell? We don't receive demonic prophecies. Because <laughs> one thing is for certain, the witches are not scared <laughs> to release their curses. They're not scared to release demonic Oh, Rabbi Saya, demonic words and incantations. But why not? Why aren't you opening up your mouth to prophesy? So there's a rekindling that is happening, you know, and some of us need to be revived. Just like the Lord showed me before this meeting that there was someone here. That you, 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 you are prophesying and then something happened along the way where you just stopped. And then the grip of fear just gripped you. And then you just said, no, God, I don't, I don't. And it was like you, you were just scared to, to go for it. You were scared to activate. You were scared to, to just do what God was telling you to do. And the Lord is even showing me even where you, you know, whoever this is for, where you even receive backlash and uh, in different forms and the backlash literally tried to hit your family, try to hit your finances and even try to hit you in just various areas where it wanted to muzzle you. But you're being recharged and restored on tonight. 
We're being rekindled on tonight. We're being realigned, healed, and broken through on tonight. So when you open up your mouth, God is going to feel it. Let's put that in the chat. When I open up my mouth, God is going to feel it. That's where we're going to stand. <laughs> we're not going to say, oh, well, I'm new to the prophetic or I haven't, I haven't prophesied or oh, I don't know. I don't know. When I open my mouth, God is going to feel it. There's going to be a reassurance. There's a vouching that is taking place right now. There's a vouching that when I open up my mouth, heaven is going to back me up. Heaven is going to back me out, back me up. And that's where we're going to stand on tonight. So this is a time to be stretched. This is a time to branch out. And this is a time, you know, where, you know, even even when you where you like, oh, I don't know if I want to volunteer. You know, that's the time where you need to you need to just step out. Just step out, just step out, just step out, just step out. So God is uh, is going to breathe into every place. And it's going to be beyond this, this room tonight. He's going to breathe into your families. He's going to breathe into your kingdom assignments. He's going to breathe into your, your children. Don't you see that breath? Uh, uh, I, I even see where God is releasing visions, even to the seers in this room. He's going to breathe into your workplaces. He's going to breathe into your businesses. He's going to breathe into your creativity. He's going to breathe into your songs. He's going to breathe into your spheres of influence. He's going to breathe into your cities he's going to breathe into your countries he's going to breathe in every single place he's breathing into you now receive it receive it receive it receive it and he's going to cause you to take dominion like never before you're going to dream dreams and you're going to see visions after today so be ready to prophesy Okay, are y'all ready? Y'all y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? Now it's time to activate. It's time to activate. It's time to activate. In the chat, just say, activate me, Lord. 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 I just see the, the Holy Spirit moving over this room. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. You're going to feel a fresh breath being released. There's a fresh breath of God being released to you now. Activate me, Lord. 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 He's breathing into you now. He's breathing into you now. He's birthing things out into you now. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. Some of you all may even feel like weeping. Activate me, Lord. God is expanding your capacity now. Even those prayers that you prayed that you felt that were stuck. Activate me, Lord. He's releasing it from the second heaven even now. Every single thing that was stuck, every single thing that you prophesied, every single thing that you believe God for, he's activating you now. He's releasing it now. Angels, release it now in the name of Jesus. Angels, release it now in the name of Jesus. Release it now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Release it now in the name of Jesus. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. I will shake the gates of hell. I will shake the gates of hell. Activate me, Lord. Oh, Rabbi Sunday. Use a fresh breath. You thought this season was over. You thought this year was over. He's activating you now. A fresh breath. He's breathing into your lungs a capacity now. Even where you thought you were on your deathbed in the spirit, where you felt that nothing was going to break through, he's breathing into you now. He's causing the dry bones to live again. I see an army in this room rising up. I see an army in this room rising up. Spring up, O oh wells. Spring up, O oh wells. Spring up, O oh wells of prophecy. Spring up, O oh wells. Spring up, O oh wells. Activate me, Lord, and cause and command your glory in this place. Command your glory in this place. Command your glory in this place. You will no longer sit. 
murder. Activate me, Lord. Not my will, God. Your will be done. Not my assurance. Your assurance be done. I will no longer hide. I will no longer be overlooked. I will no longer say yes and hide. Activate me, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's a shaking. There's a rattling happening. Activate me, Lord. There's a rattling happening even now. Oh, Rabba Sakaya. Runda Baba Baya Rindea. Ramandia Sandebe Arandaya Ramandia Se. Activate me, Lord. Activate me, Lord. There's a scroll in the spirit. The Lord has shown me a, a new scroll. He's shown me a new scroll. Uh, uh, he's releasing a scroll uh, to, to different people in this room. And this scroll is a mandate, a mandate to speak over your nation, a mandate to speak over your nation. God is going to begin to wake you up. To speak over your nation. He's going to begin. You're going to see that scroll. And he's activating it right now. He's activating it right now. It will be a petition. Against the gates of hell. A petition. I even see. Ah, Rabbi, I see the muzzling. Uh, the muzzling. Uh, uh, literally. Uh, where I see declaration of independence. In the spirit. There's an unmuzzling happening right now. Right now, right now, right now. So even as we're doing these activations, endeavor, endeavor to prophesy, covet to prophesy, covet to to uh, to raise your hand and and uh, and, and uh, volunteer on tonight. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to shift into that even now. So I just need I need uh, two volunteers. I need two volunteers. And you could just come off a of mute and say, me. Okay, I have uh, Shayola. I will. And uh, I'm not seeing who that is. Uh, what's your name? Joyce. Okay, Joyce. Okay, so the the first activation, um, I want you to, what you're going to do is, I'm just looking here. So this is the one word activation. So I want you to pray over one, one another. So Joyce and Shayola, I want you to pray over one another and uh, uh, literally just believe believe and search God for one word, literally one word. And then uh, prophesy that into each other. So I'm gonna have um, a Joyce, you can go first, uh, but uh, uh, I only want you to pray because sometimes we, we end up hiding behind our prayers where we begin to, you know, we... <laughs> I know because I, I used to do it where, you know, I'm praying for a long time and then I, I end up not prophesying. So I only want you to uh, pray for 30 seconds and then uh, believe God to show you a word, uh, just one word and then uh, dive into dive into that and prophesy that over uh, each other. So uh, Joyce, you can go first and then Shayola, you can uh, do the same with Joyce. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, for Sheola, God. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for your kindness, God. I thank you, Lord, for a long life. You will satisfy her and show her your salvation, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And I thank you, Lord, for the word life. You should have life and more full, exceeding, abundant, and above all that you could think, or ask, or imagine. You should have life and life and water, life in your family, life in your every area of your life, life in your finance, life in your home, marriage, marriage to be, your children have life, full life, exceeding life, above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. The life of God with the love of God, the life, life, life. You shall live and not die to the crown of works of God. Amen. Amen. 
Santa Bukura Vasata. Father God, I thank you right now for your little voice, oh God. As you have highlighted the word flower, 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 Lord God. Just it, your season with all the full face to the Lord God. That you have put baby over her life, oh Father God. Just so that he, here right now, Lord God, declare and I decree that people, even from the past, is about to start coming to bring her and give her flowers while she's here on earth. The things that were held up and stopped up by the enemy is now being released. In the name of Jesus, everything is going to flow to you without, with ease, it's going to flow without measure, without boundaries. God is about to open up the storehouse for you. Everything with your name on it, we call it forth right now in Jesus' name. It's like a washing that's going forth even now. It's like a sprinkler from heaven even now. Lord God, wash her, clothe her, Lord God, with your righteousness, Lord God. Pour out a blessing that she will have no room to feel, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we thank you right now, Lord God, for your comfort without measure, Lord God. Oh, Thank you, Father God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys did so very well. Uh, thank you so much for volunteering. Um, I'm going to need two more people. I volunteer. This is Alicia, Miss Renita. Okay. Alicia. I need another one. Just come off a of mute. One more person. Hi, uh, who's that talking? It's Susan. Susan. Okay, well, thank you so much for volunteering. This activation, you are going to, so you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to believe God uh, to show you an image. Show you an image. And then once he shows you an image, I want you to prophesy that into one another. And be careful not so you can you can pray initially, but only pray for about 30 seconds and then dive into uh, prophesying into whatever God shows you for for each other. So um, uh, Alicia, you can go first. And then once you're done, uh, Miss Susan, you can you can go after her. You can go ahead and go, Alicia. OK. So God, we thank you right now for Miss Susan. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for even the image of lightning, God. I thank you that, Father God, that you are causing almost like a lightning, of, like a thunderbolt lightning to judge everything that has been trying to come up against her. So God, I just thank you that your judgment will come against everything that has been attacking her in previous seasons, God. I thank you that your lightning right now in the name of Jesus would judge everything coming against her finances. I thank you that your lightning would judge everything that will come against her family and her relationships in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your judgment, Father God, in the name of Jesus, breaking everything that has been coming against every part of her, of her life in the name of Jesus. And we just declare that now that your lightning, your thunderous lightning is a shifting force in every area she's been praying for. God, I thank you that your lightning, your thunderous lightning is shifting forth, Father God, even in her dreams, Father God, in the name of Jesus, even in her visions and her ability to see, God, we thank you that lightning in the name of Jesus will shift forth in her life. And even uh, the passion, Father God, like the way lightning is quick, and speedy and even strong. I think that that passion uh, would be the same way her passion would be, would be quick, speedy, and strong in the name of Jesus. So I just declare that over you, that you would have passion like lightning and that the lightning, thunders, uh, lightning of God would come against everything in Miss Susan's life that would try to come against her in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, 
Alicia, as I am praying for you, I see a boat. And in this boat, uh, the Lord is leading you. Uh, you are on it. And as you are going through your spiritual life, as you are growing with Him, a boat a is signifying patience. As you are staying in this boat, you are being, God is teaching you patience. Patience to read His Word, to study His Word, and to learn patiently in the boat. You may feel like it's moving too slow, but He is saying to you right now, patience in this season is what you need for, in order for you to learn and let me teach you what I need to teach you to go to the next level in your walk with me, says the Lord. And in this boat, he is also giving you strength, thank you, Jesus. He's giving you strength to, to be patient, to hold on to that patience. And because it seems as if you, know, you, want, you just want to go fast, fast, fast. But he's like, no, 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 slow down and take your time. Because the way I am taking you is a place where there is a lot of struggle, there's a lot of storms, but if you just learn and in my presence, if you just stay in his presence and patiently wait as the Lord teaches you, he will equip you and give you a mantle and give you a word and give you a fighting mechanisms to stand in the storm in Jesus name and I yield amen amen yes thank you so much for volunteering uh Alicia God wants you to cast your net deeper um although you went he wants you to go deeper and he actually wants you to prophesy as you uh prophetically uh prayed but he wants you to go again so go ahead and release what God is telling you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the only image I am getting currently is just uh, like a like an older woman and almost like a Deborah in a way, and that uh, your prayers are Deborah-like prayers where you've been praying for um, people for years and praying for like uh, family members for years, and you may not have seen uh, like a manifestation of your prayers or. You have uh, you may not have seen like things come forth in uh, different areas of your life, but I feel like uh, the Deborah anointing and the just like the the plowing and even just how she was a leader uh, among a generation of young men and uh, a generation of uh, warriors. I feel like that anointing will grow even greater in this season where your prayers, like whatever you're praying for, will begin to manifest and they will almost be more uh, warfare type uh, prayers. So I see that like a, um, a, just a very strong Deborah anointing that will shift more uh, and basically manifest everything that you've been planning for for so long. So. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you all so much for volunteering. Uh, uh, even as I was getting ready for this room, um, the Lord was showing me someone in Marketplace Ministry. Uh, whoever is in Marketplace Ministry, it could be more than one person. Uh, go ahead and come off mute. I want to. Uh, I just want to re release whatever God gives me uh, for you. He didn't give me where he wants me to open up my mouth, and he's going to feel it um, even as you would come off mute. Okay, if that's you, just say me. 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 Okay, me. this is going to be easier because I'm, <laughs> put me in the chat. 
<laughs> it seems like we got a whole uh, convocation of eagles. <laughs> Um, even as uh, you're saying me in the chat, the Lord is showing me, um, even as I jokingly said, a convocation of eagles, he's actually uh, causing his eagles to arise in the marketplace like never before. You're going to see uh, different things uh, before um, it even hits different industries. Uh, you're going to see uh, different, um, I see almost like cyber attacks and different things before they happen, but God is going to make you the answer. Uh, God is going to begin to give you witty ideas um, and things that you will see miles and Ahead, and he will even uh, usher you to begin to work on different systems to have them already in place. And some of you all may already have those things in place uh, where the uh, when the people and the businesses or when the people, the, the corporations, the organizations uh, will inquire of uh, your services, you will already have everything set in stone to mobilize. And he's, he's going to mobilize you like never before. And even as an eagle uh, operates in higher heights, he's uh, be, he's going to begin to stretch you and this stretching is not going to be one that's going to be difficult or one that you're going to feel uh, where it's going to cause high, uh, hardship or anything like that but the stretching is going to come where he's going to begin to stretch your uh, capacity stretch your boundaries and your territories you will even begin to get a word of knowledge of different cities uh, and I even see different uh, almost like different services that God will begin to uh, uh, work on you and some of you you all would even say, well, Lord, that's not even my field. Or Lord, I've never done that. How am I going to do that? And I even see where God is going to release his strategies to you and he's going to bless you. Um, I see even where the Lord is uh, showing me how proud he is. I see his heart for you. I see how proud he is on how you've stood. Uh, I even see uh, like holy standards, holy standards. I see the words holy standards, even where you couldn't do what other business have done, even where you couldn't waver or be tossed to and fro where you had to stay and be uh, like I see like a uh, being set apart where God calls you to be set apart and he wanted he wanted you to be set apart for his glory and he wanted to for you to like I almost see like a almost like I see the words birthing canal where he wanted to uh, birth the purity purity and his holiness into different industries that you represent where there will be greater uh, greater uh, purity that will be uh, sent forth and even where those that you that he would begin to uh, I see employees the word employees even where he would cause you to hire different people and those people will have the have like spirits like you and they will also be after the the kingdom in the righteousness of God like never before Hallelujah. so I see where even God says do not give up don't throw in the towel keep going keep going keep going you are the answer you are the key and even where some of you all have said oh I need I need this I need that I need this mentor I need that mentor and God says that you are the answer you are the answer you are the key so I just release that to you all in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus amen hallelujah amen amen okay so I need uh I need uh let me see how many people do I have uh, two to three people in the room that are from the UK? Or live in the UK? Yes. Okay, I see. Yes. One person. Just put me in the chat. Yes. Okay. So with the three or okay i see me 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 so with the three or four of you all uh what i want you to do is the lord was showing me that there is a release that he wanted to do over the uk this is a uk release so i want you to uh just pray for 30 seconds and then the lord is going to give you a word for the uk and i want you to just release that um uh, yeah, so just keep it at, um, if you can, keep it at a minute. So pray for 30 seconds and then release what you hear the Lord saying for the uh, the other 30 seconds. 
So uh, whoever feels led to go first, you can go ahead and come off mute and uh, go ahead and get started. Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I see you, Lord, having to open the heavens and allowing the your increase, your blessings to flow in the hearts of men. They're having this yearning to come, to just know you, to just serve you. They don't know what's happening, but they just want to open their hearts to you. Those who have been in the dark want to see the light. The revival is already happening. It's already taking place and beginning to manifest in the life of people who once have known the Lord, but now we are seeing the increase, the revival coming in now. It's already transforming their lives. It's already working in their families. Healings are taking place. Manifestations are happening. The children are changing. They are beginning to want to know God and not going far away. It's happening already with the influx of people coming from different parts of the world. It's making them see the reason why they should serve the Lord. The Lord is already gathering them. And I see the Lord bringing in people to show them the right path. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hear boldness, boldness, spirit of boldness upon being released onto people, people who are who have been afraid, you know, to speak what the Lord is saying in the season or over the Ugo, over his children. A new spirit of boldness upon giving to his children like lions to speak the word of God without fear or repercussions. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I believe I have one more person. Okay, maybe it was just the two of you. Um, I even see, uh, for the UK, I see expansion. I saw, uh, I just see your, like your flag, uh, just wave. Uh, I see like a, a flag on the outside and it's on a pole and it's uh, waving. And I see expansion, expansion, expansion. And I even see where there have been different spirits. I, I almost see like, almost like a dragon-like spirit that has tried to come against the UK, but, and even uh, almost like a, like darkness and just different things. But I see where the Lord is going to cause his people to prevail like never before. And uh, even where uh, he would cause, um, like, I just see different systems that have uh, almost like system. I see people running in the streets, but I see where uh, it's a representation of different systems that have been put into place or different things, even where I see I see uh, the news, I see the news and I see people like uh, almost like chaos and just different things. But God is going to uh, wash and cleanse those places. And he's also going to cause his people to have a strategy on how to mobilize forward where you're not just uh, looking at the news and you're not basing your tra the trajectory of your life, your season, your year based on what you see in the news, even where I see breaking news and, and almost like where it's trying to like cause fear and chaos. And the Lord is just showing me that he's just going to wash and cleanse that. And uh, he wants you to rest and abide in his presence, to rest and abide in what he's doing, to rest and abide in his word and to uh, rest and abide that he, re he will prevail, that the gates of hell will not prevail but the word of God will prevail so I just see that and even like a peace uh entering in even where 
uh, I feel almost like a, I have a word of knowledge, like where I feel almost like a, uh, like a subtle headache, like a pain in the neck, uh, even where it's uh, with something th certain things that have been placed, uh, uh, placed in, in, in the UK where it, 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 it has been an assignment to cause almost like a pain in the neck. Uh, and I even see the word and I, the Lord is showing me a bottle, bottleneck, 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 almost like a, almost like a, I don't want to say a choking, but like a bottleneck and, and trying to cause stress. I see the word stress, trying to cause stress and fear where it causes headaches and it causes people just to have like large or long sighs where you're like, Ah, here we go. But the Lord wants you to stand in the gap and pray. He wants you to prophesy. He wants you to speak life. He wants you to speak life. And even as you will hear different people speak word curses against the UK, he wants you to shut those things down quickly. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So even as you are seeing things, God wants you to shift in the spirit and he wants you to uh, shut those things down in the spirit. And there's going to be in a lock and unlocking even where I see like treasures tre treasures treasures in the land I'm not sure if there's been something held up economically but I see like a vault in the spirit and like the vault unlocking 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 uh, so I just released that over the UK in the name of Jesus um, before we move forward there uh, there was someone uh, the Lord was also showing me someone that was praying for an acceleration to come up upon their life. Uh, almost like you feel like you there are several updates that the Lord was downloading into your spirit. But for some reason, you feel as if uh, uh, it's just like something there. I'm not sure if it's fear or something, but if that is you, just put me me in the chat, me in the chat, me in the chat. Okay, I see uh, Sheola, Brianna. Uh, uh, so uh, even over you all, uh, I just prophesied there, that there is a an acceleration coming upon you now. Even as the Lord highlighted you all to me um, and said that there were people in this room that have been praying for an acceleration and there's updated versions of yourself and you have been confused on what that looks like, how you're supposed to demonstrate and how you're supposed to move forward. I prophesy even now in the name of Jesus that there's a new wind. I see the wind of God literally moving in the spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that is moving upon your people right now in the name of Jesus. I thank Thank you, Lord God, that they will literally, you will literally feel uh, like a like a new wind come upon you right now. And that is the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that there is a wind of acceleration upon them right now. You're moving. Even where I see God, uh, the Lord breaking strongholds and even breaking strongholds of the oh, Rabbi Asaya. I even see where the enemy has literally tried to cause a siege around your head, around your thoughts and cause psychological warfare. And the Lord is breaking that right now. He's breaking that right now. The Lord says, do not believe the lies of the enemy me do not believe the places where he wanted you to to uh, lie stagnant or dormant or uh, in a place of plateauing even where you felt as if you were out of the will of God the Lord says that he's breaking that right now in the name of Jesus and breakthrough is in this room right now breakthrough is in this room right now just receive it in the name of Jesus and he's going to cause you to accelerate even as you asleep there's going to be deliverance even as you sleep and when you wake up in the morning that uh, I'm feeling heavy Heaviness. I'm getting a word of knowledge of heaviness and the heaviness that you felt in your chest, the heaviness that you felt in your chest in this season and even over this past year, uh, even where I see for someone, this heaviness started uh, like a year or two ago and then you have literally been praying, okay, what is oppressing me? I literally hear you saying, what is oppressing me? What is oppressing me? And God is going to break that even as you sleep where you're going to have heavenly dreams. He's even going to download different things to you. You're even, I see someone even in a business suit i'm not sure if one of you all are uh being led into the marketplace but i see even where the lord is going to breathe into you even where uh i literally see where you 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 were praying for the update praying for the newness and and uh you felt like your your prayers weren't being answered and the lord wasn't being silent on you but the lord says that he will be the best 
business mentor that you would ever have. I literally see a business suit in the realm of the spirit and the Lord is showing me that he would be the best business mentor that you would ever have. All you need to do is seek him. Stop looking to the left and to the right. Stop looking for different mentors. Stop looking for someone to teach you different things because the Lord wants to literally birth something new in you. Even as you say, Lord, I need a new mentor. The Lord wants to birth something new in you right now in the name of Jesus. And the fresh wind is literally moving and mobilizing and there's a there's a new wind there's a fresh fire there's even a burning around the heart even where uh was one of you all uh i'm not sure if it's several but there's uh i see heartbreak 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 uh like pain in the heart pain in the heart where there has been uh heartbreak 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 and even like an aching pain in the heart in your physical body even where it's like trying to manifest uh like sickness in the body literally like physically uh but the lord is breathing into you right now I'm not sure if you have a doctor's appointment. I'm not sure if they're, if uh, I, I the Lord just showed me medication, medication, even where I'm not sure if you're on medication right now or they're thinking about putting you on medication because they don't know what it is. But God is breaking that right now in the name of Jesus. I literally see that thing fleeing from you right now. And I prophesy that, that the update is here. The update is here. The update is here that even in the natural, when our phones need an update, and they start acting up because uh, we haven't updated our systems or even our laptops and our, our technology. I thank you that we are taking on the kingdom technology right now in the name of Jesus. And you're updating us right now, Lord God. So fresh wind upon every single place. Fresh wind upon every single place. Fresh wind upon every single place. Fresh wind upon every single person. And even uh, Pastor Praise, I see a fresh wind coming, coming upon you right now. It's coming upon you right now. I literally see you like almost like on a ship and God is causing you to navigate this season like never before but the the key thing that the Lord wants me to reveal is even as you're on this ship you're standing and you're resting and abiding you're not doing anything like literally the Lord is just causing this fresh wind and this new navigation where this ship is just mobilizing like never before and the Lord said that this is his ship this is his lordship this is a, this is a representation of his lordship in your life for this new season and even the things that you were waiting on I see you looking off to the sure the things that you were waiting for the things that you were uh i see you focus but i see like a new joy that is going to come upon you even now the new joy of the lord is going to come upon you now where you would go from waiting to your now waiting to your now waiting to your now this is now season this is due season even as i see a, a pregnant belly uh where i see this is this is due season this is due season this is due season and the lord is literally showing me d-u-e do and d E W do this is due season where you where uh, there have been different things uh, and, and different pregnancies in the spirit that God is going to literally birth out but this is also due season D E W where he's going to cause his the dew of his his glory the dew of his morning glory to come upon you now and not just for you but those that are attached to your life those that are in your ministry those that are part of your church those that are even in this room and Rabbi Saya. The Lord has even shown me that just because you're in this room, in her room, you're going to experience ah, Rabbi Sakaya. You're going to experience almost like a second do just because you are in the room of the do, of the do, of the do, the do, the do, the do, the do season and the do of his glory even now. There's a fresh breath coming upon you, Pastor Praise, like never before. And I even see where and the Lord showed me, I thought I thought it was a cape that was just floating, but the Lord is showing me your mantle, 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 your mantle. Oh, Rabbi Saya, Rabbi Yada. Even where the, the Lord is releasing, is releasing different angels to you. I'm not sure if the Lord has been uh, uh, causing you to pray more and to releasing your angels, but I literally see different angels assigned to your life and new angels that are going to be released where you're going to send them out, even as you're on, on the Lord while you're on this lordship while you're on you're anchored in his presence while you're anchored in this place while you're navigating this is the season and the systems that god is calling you to where he's going to cause you to release those angels and they're going to go out into the land they're even going to spy the land and come back with a report they're going to come back with a report even where there is land with your name on it even where there is a real estate 
with your name on it, even where there is housing with your name on it, even where there, like I, I, the Lord is just keep showing me uh, different lands, different lands, different lands. Not sure if recently you've been praying for the dry land, like dry lands, dry regions. But I literally see God answering your prayers. And because you have been praying for them, he's going to give them to you. Because you have been obedient, he's going to give it to them. Not that you say, oh, Lord, I claim this, I claim that. But the Lord is literally going to, get, going to give you cities. And he's going to give you different uh, 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 geographical locations. Literally, just because you pray for them. Just because you pray for them. And I hear the Lord saying, just because you labor for them. I will give them to you, says the Lord. I will give them to you, says the Lord. Even as you have uh, walked in me and you have rested and abided in my glory, I will cause my glory to explode upon you like never before. And there's a new fire that I'm releasing upon you right now that shall fall from the top of this room down to the bottom of this room. And I will cause you to be set on fire like never before. Even where I will arrest every single place that operated against you. Even where I will, I am arresting the word curses that operated against you i'm causing every single thing to be set on fire like never before can't you see it can't you see my fire can't you see my glory can't you see what i was doing behind the scenes can't you see it that even in the times where the enemy tried to send out assignments of discouragement i was lighting him up on fire i'm lighting up every devil even now says the lord i will cause him to catch my fire right now and i'm smiting my hands against every uh every system of wickedness i'm smiting my hands and i'm causing it to tumble to the ground every devil shall fall like lightning every devil shall fall like lightning every demonic assignment shall fall like lightning says the lord every single thing that tried to operate against you even where the devil tried to send a new storm even recently i am causing it to fall light like lightning i am causing it to fall like lightning and even as i cause it to fall like lightning i am opening up my new dimensions to you even as you will step in you will have new encounters in me even as you will step in i will cause even this prayer time in this prayer room to step in with it even where uh, there will be uh, like the day of pentecost where i would cause a new language new tongues to be spread out into the nations even as there are different nations in this room I, I am causing new dimensions even now I am causing new testimonies to come forth now for this is your due season and you will be in the due this is your due season and you will be in the due I am here for you I'm warm for you and not just you those that are connected to you for i am causing a remnant of my glory to come upon you right now i'm causing a remnant of my glory to fall upon this room right now i'm causing a remnant of my glory to open up the nations right now open up the nations the nations shall know your name the, the nations shall know your name the nations shall know your name you will even hear the nations oh rabba sakaya raya groaning and waiting for the sons to be revealed the nations will know your name and not from a place of clout not from a place of causing the nations to be another buckle on your belt but the nation shall know your name they shall know your prayers and when you open up your mouth and pray they will receive it says the lord So I just release that over you and I release that over you all and I yield my mic. Thank you.
就很怕我。
believes and where the mouth confession is made. Whereas to make that confession, I receive what you have spoken, Lord. I receive. You can unmute your mind, you can do so. If you want to write it on the chat, you can do so. But with the mouth, confession is made. With the mouth, confession is made. I receive. Faith comes with a mouth confession is made. I receive. I receive. I receive what you have released. I receive. 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 I
that church that was there, we are today's church. We are today's church and there's an activation that has taken place that we must remain active. And whatever the Holy Spirit will trigger in your heart, in our hearts, hallelujah, keep it active. Keep it out there. And um, just confirming a, a few things, uh, Prophet Renita, I, I, I got into a place where, I think it was, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, I opened up my mouth to speak. I, I mean, I was praying in my closet and the Lord said to me, why are you telling me what to do all the time? And I want us to understand when the Lord speaks. I mean, he speaks to everyone in different dimensions. And some of the things I share with you is, is, is really my conversation with the Lord or my experience with the Lord. It's why you're always telling me what to do. And I hope we hear it in the spirit. Because that's what we do. Lord, pray that you bring this. Pray that you turn that one's heart around. I pray that you shift that. I pray that you do that. He says, you're always telling me. And I stopped. And he shifted my prayer. Present the matter to me. Because you can't think more than me. You can't know more than me. Present the matter to me. And he shifted me into a place of, you know, I've shared this again before. I'll come back. When the Lord said to me at the time, he said, you don't trust me. Oh, I don't know some conversations you have with the Lord. I'm opening some of mine to you. He said, you don't trust me. And I was shocked. I was like, Lord. It's because when you finish praying, you are now thinking what you should do instead of waiting for my instructions. I said, I'm sorry, Lord. When you speak to someone, you wait for a response. That brought a check to my spirit. You finish speaking and you're thinking, who should I call? What should I do? You are. You're not waiting for me. There's another time he said, you don't trust me. You don't trust my judgment. And I was like, how? Because when I want to do something, you're asking me for mercy. That was really regarding some people. He said, you're asking me for mercy. And then he brought the whole life of Moses. I wanted to do some things. He stood in my way. He said, you're always standing in my way. And this is what happened to Moses. He never got to the promised land. Because he kept standing in my way. And I had to back off. I had to, I had to seriously back off. Like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. So when he brought this back to me, that you're always telling me what to do, I had to back off. So if you hear me praying, your will, your way, your word, present the matter. You know, if you go to the courts, you present, you don't tell the judge in the court, judge, make this decision. You present the matter to the court. They might ask you questions, but you present the matter to the court. Anyone who has been in the court seat, you present the matter to the court. The court comes back or the judge comes back and tells you the decision that they have made. And I pray that this would help someone here. So we present our martyrs to the Lord in prayer. Because what are you doing? You're making 
prayer is really getting to the courts of heaven. And you, you hear the terms that are made. We make our petitions before the Lord. It can make sudden pleas, but you now depend on the judge to make the final decision. And that's why it's very important that we understand that we have a righteous judge. So you don't get yourself, don't go and do wrong, and then you come to the righteous judge, he will judge you. He will judge us. He will say, because this is my son, so therefore you can get away with wrong. You can, you know, it's okay, I'll just cover you. It doesn't work like that. So... And I've really been in a place where it's like, I'm waiting for your move, Lord. I'm waiting for your instructions. I'm listening. I told the boss to quit. I said, I'm in a place where I'm, I'm listening. And there has not been any move that he's asked me to make that I have not seen his hand. Bible says that we need to strive to enter into the rest of the Lord. And I pray that we have a revelation of what that rest means. It doesn't mean you fold your hands. It means you're waiting on Him to give instructions. On Him to tell you what to do. Because He's our Father. And He is Lord. He owns us. When you give your life to Jesus, he now owns you. He owns us. He's called Adonai, the owner. Adonai is saying, oh, Adonai, we worship you. No, it's a description of God's position over us. He owns, the, he's the owner of everything, including us. So the owner has a right to make a final decision. So when you give your life to Jesus, and it's the best decision you could ever make. Yes. Everything. Paul says, pray about everything. You make a petition to him. Make our supplications to him. We present everything to everything. Everything. And then we open up ourselves to hear what he's saying, what he wants us to do. And I don't really need to reassure you, but if that's going to help, let me reassure you. That God is not man. He's not short of help. In his realm, everything is possible. To us, to man, things could be impossible. But to him, all things, all things. So I pray that um, would allow the Holy Spirit to teach us because he's our teacher to help us to move from the place of anxiety Jesus says do not be anxious for anything hallelujah it's because he knows that in the earth realm in the human realm anxiety will come you know sorts of things so when he says do not be anxious he knows he knows but I pray we find rest. We grow and mature into the place of making our petitions before the Lord and allowing Him. I heard what Prophet Renita, you know, just said it can look like nothing is happening. It doesn't mean it's not happening. And it's a walk of faith. And I pray that we grow in that faith, really trusting in Him. 
and relying on him. And so one more time, Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you have released here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. As I was searching out and I knew in this season, even going into the new month, today's the 29th, we have one more day to go, which is tomorrow. Um, the Lord was saying to me that um, he's releasing travailing power. Travailing power has been released to his children in this season. People are now having an understanding of the power of prayer for the will of God to be done. Hearts have been aligned to his will, breaking the strongholds of religion in our minds. And um, I had written that down. No, he, no, he spoke and all Spirit said, write it down, write it down, write it down. And I think it was that morning, the following morning, I saw Pastor Jaquita posted something on the gatekeepers and from the same chapter, from Isaiah chapter 62, the same chapter. And I was like, Lord, it's the same spirit. Because she went in to talk about the positions of the gatekeepers. Gatekeepers are not there for their own agenda. They're there for a kingdom agenda. Ensuring that God's kingdom, his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. I was like, thank you, Lord. So when we shift from our own place and we begin to hear the Lord, and say, Lord, it's what you want. He'd open up our eyes on our understanding about his kingdom agenda and what we really need to um, pray and, and speak forth. And um, don't worry about the needs. They're going to be added. If you're here, may I say it again. If you are sick in the kingdom of God, don't worry about the needs. They will be added. Except you're not sick in the kingdom of God. Then maybe you can keep on worrying about the needs. But there's a, there's a, there's a. The Holy Spirit said it's, it's a. Uh, what, what did he call it? God's prince, first principle, God's perfect law of answers to prayers. Okay, God's perfect law of answers to prayers is. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of the things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Um, so if you hear you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want to extend an invitation. I want to extend an invitation to you um, because this life is a spiritual life. And um, it, it, when, you, when you're coming to the kingdom of God, you're not birthed into church but you're birthed into a kingdom when you uh, have this opportunity to be birthed into the kingdom of God, you will now understand spiritual things because it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual life that you're birth that you will be birthed into. If you're here and you haven't given your life to Jesus, just put your hand up so that we can see, um, and we will pray with you just in case you're here. You haven't given your life to Christ, haven't? Everybody here is saved. Praise God, we need to reach out to the unsaved. If everybody in here is saved, we need to reach out to the unsaved. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay, praise God. Um, I think we should stop here. Actually, let's, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and then we'll go. Permit me. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just give us an insight of what we have just encountered. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only 16 verses, so we can have two readers. have the U version Bible the it's 
changed, by the way. <laughs> the setting has changed. Or the, or the, they've updated the version. Okay, let's go. For, um, first reader, please, let's read from verse 1 to verse 8. Not to break the spirit. I'll, if I'll count two seconds. So nobody reads, I would read. Which book is it, Mary? Thank you. New Living Translation. Okay. First Corinthians. One. Yeah. First Corinthians two. Thank you. One through eight. Yes, thanks. It's Paul's message of wisdom. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet, when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God, his plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. Amen. Amen. Keep going, keep going. Read to the end, please. Yes, ma'am. That is what the scripture scriptures mean when they say no eye has seen no ear has heard and no mind has imagined what god has prepared for those who love him but it was to us that god revealed these things by his spirit for his spirit searches out everything and shows us god's deep secrets no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from with human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. But only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We have the Christ-like mind. The mind of Christ means we think the way Christ thinks. We understand the way Christ understands. We would reflect the way he would reflect. We respond the way or we should respond the way he would respond. And that's a spiritual mind. Hallelujah. 
Um, Mr. Chris, do you have anything to share with us before? I don't know how briefly it can be, but we can always come back tomorrow. By God's grace, are you available to speak, sir? Praise the Lord. Amen. I tell you, Pastor Praise, when the message was going, I was thinking, do we really need to do um, First Corinthians to We do, because it's an alignment with what just happened. <laughs> and I just thought, this is just... Because what we witness is exactly yes. what the Corinthians church were. Yes. And it's difficult to understand except you leave it practically. Mm -hmm. And for people that have been following this message, you can remember Pastor Praise keeps saying the writers of the Bible have divided it into chapters for it to for us to easily comprehend. So the Bible was not written in chapters. It's easier for us to understand. So for us to understand the first five verses of First Corinthians two, we need to actually go back to First Corinthians from um, chapter one from verse twenty six. So that message. Um, if Pastor uh, Priest permits me, we can take some other time because we need to go deep into that, um, which is where Paul finds himself talking to the Corinthians to say, we are the same. You know, remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you instead of God chose this thing. So he's saying, do you know what? You guys and me are not different. We that are given the gospel to preach, we've not done anything special. We were despised of the world. God just chose us. So when I came to you, Paul is saying to them, I came in not in lofty world because remember, Corinth is laid at the bottom of Athens, which is the Greek center of wisdom where people had lofty words. You know, you've got to go, you've got to present your fact. Socrates and all these things you took about comes there. So there is a temptation to want to go to people when you're preaching the word of God in those lofty ideas. But Paul is saying, no, 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 no. I didn't come in that. Here Paul in from verse 6 begins to unveil some mysteries and I'm just going to capture it quickly because our time is fast spent. For some of us that understand the mystery of Trinity, which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, man also is made of man the body, man the soul, and man the spirit. I want to repeat that. For people that understand the Trinity of God, that will know God in three persons, there's a Trinity. There is God the Father, God the Son. The same way God has created man. Man is man the body, man the soul, and man the spirit. Unfortunately, a man has concentrated 90% of his energy, which is just one third, on the body. So when I say Pastor Praise, the first thing that jumps to mind is, oh, what she, does she look like? No, that's just the body. Um, I think man has come to understand that body. There's also God, the, the spirit of man. And the same way that man has a mind. Unfortunately, also, man has caught up with the body, the man has also caught up with the mind. The mind is the soul. So when we treat our world, we go uh, mental health, which is the mind, we go body. But nobody ever talks about your spirit. Have you ever heard somebody sick of the spirit? But we are spirit. We are spirit being. So when you get saved, what gets saved is the spirit. And Paul is trying to explain here that for you believers, for you, for you to understand the things of God, your spirit needs to be awake. And if you don't have the spirit of God, no matter what is, for people that don't have the spirit of God, what we've done in the last one and the other was, what, what are these people doing is a waste. Because you don't have the spirit of God. You cannot understand the spirit of God except you got the things of God, except you've got the spirit of God. So when I'm among mature believers, I do speak the words, I, uh, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind that belongs to this word. Do you know when, um, when a believer 
lives in body. What do we call them? We call them Kana Christian. And it puts people to shame when you say, oh, he's a kind of Christian. Unfortunately, most believers who are not even kind of who are believers are just soulish Christians. Thank you, Pastor Priest, for unveiling your secret of when you're talking to God and God is saying to you, you still do what you want to do because your mind, which is what needs washing. That's why the Bible says we need to renew our minds daily. Because the mind is such a powerful thing. And Bible tells us your mind can't be trusted. Just your mind cannot be trusted. Scripture tells us who, you know, that the mind of man is desperately wicked. That's Bible. That's not me. Again, but prison right, prison right there. So who can trust him? The only thing that can be trusted is the spirit, your spirit. And that is the least thing we pay attention to as Christians. Because that is what communicates with God. Your spirit, activating your spirit, is the biggest gift a believer can have. Because if your spirit is awake, if your spirit is alive in Christ, you are tuned to God because God is a spirit. Those that worship him was worship in spirit and in truth. No wonder we are believers and we get the results of the world because most believers have never trained their spirit. The prophet that was sharing said, if you don't exercise your spirit, it will still be the same it was 10, 10 years ago because that spirit has not been activated. That was why soul spirit had to be activated when you met um, um, Samuel because you can it cannot lead the children of Israel as a new king without it wasn't a prophet but people went wow he saw also a prophet he can't get from God the instruction he needs to lead these people when he has a dead spirit if you follow the life of Saul every time he needed to commune with God he had to go and get David at the point. And when the spirit died and he didn't have a spirit again, is when he starts misbehaving. Please study Saul's life and you will understand the power of being led in the spirit to commune with God in spirit for you to have instructions. No wonder David is a man after God's heart. Even though his body, his soul was always fighting but he was always talking to his why why are they cast down all oh, my soul? He knows that his soul can be cast down. But I will rejoice in the Lord of my salvation. What you need to be alive is your spirit. So Saul is um, Paul is saying here back into this book of Corinthians, which I wish we have more time to do. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. The mystery of God is plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it out ultimately. Because what people are used to, the professors of this world, the inventors of this world, people that are smart are book people. They are the people that are ruled by their mind. When I go to university, my mind is what is being trained. My, my, my spirit is not being trained. I mean, if I have 10 PhDs, some of us have got MSCs and PhDs running out of our ears. What, I mean, I'm not saying it's not good, but what you're training is your mind. But what needs to get to the root of the things of God? Because if they know, they will not have killed the God of creation. The rulers of this world don't have it. That's why the things of the world and the things of the spirit will never be in alignment. That is what the scriptures mean when it says, no eyes are seen, no ears are heard, no mind as imagine what God has prepared for those who love him because the mind of man cannot comprehend it the only thing that can comprehend it is the spirit of God so if you're a believer and you are not you, are, you don't have this you don't been baptized in the spirit of God I tell you what you are you are you are struggling to walk in the same alignment as the world no wonder people come to church and say it's not working for them it won't work for you because what you record is still that you're working, you're using the mind of, of, of man to work out the things of God. 
And because our mind is what has suppressed our spirit for such a long time, is what we've depended, depended on for years. I mean, for so many of us, if you're 50 years old, that means the first 50 years of your work with, with in this earth, you've, you've had to reason everything. And you know what? Even as believers, we've copied the language of the word. You hear believers say, that doesn't make sense. Because man is led by his senses. The things of God are not supposed to make sense. Sense is how the word leads itself. The things of God is in the things of the spirit. So why should I do that? God has asked me to do stuff. It does not make sense. Yes, because your mind is saying that that is how the world lives. The world lives by senses. It must smell right. It must look right. Even our churches have brought things, things that talks about the mind in. The entire church is run by the mind. Does it mean God saying our mind is not useful? Our mind is useful. But for us to commune with God and let our mind be activated, the spirit of God needs to be activated first. I will just quickly round up because I know our day is spent. I will need to go to, 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 to work. But it was to her that God has revealed that these things by the spirit, for his spirit teaches out everything and shows us God's deep secret. So imagine if you don't have the spirit of God, how can you get this? No one knows a, a person's talk except the own spirit. So if you look at the spirit is talking used here, it's a small letter S. So you don't know the things of God except your, your mind doesn't know. It's only you that know. And no one knows what God knows except God's own spirit. See, he puts a capital S there. God's Holy Spirit needs to commune with your spirit. So if you've got a dead spirit and you're a Christian, or if your spirit is not activated and strong enough to trust in God, when Pastor Praise came, oh, let's rest on the word. He's saying, let your spirit commune with the spirit of God and take it because your mind is wrestling with what you've just heard. And we've received God's spirit. Not the world spirit, small s again. Not the world spirit. One of these days we have the opportunity of learning about dead spirit. Because what really died in, in Adam was not his mind, was not his body, was his spirit with a small s. So we can know the wonderful thing God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use the word that comes from human wisdom because the human one that comes from, talks to the mind. It talks to the mind. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, capital S. That's the Spirit of God. Using the Spirit's word to explain spiritual things, spiritual truths. You are a saint. You are both apart. You must have the Spirit. So today, if you do not have the Spirit of God, I tell you, you are shortchanging yourself. I don't care. If you're born again, you've got the Spirit of God and your spirit is not st strong enough to receive. It's like having an analog phone line in a digital world. Yeah. Too many believers are running around with Nokia phone transmission in world where it's 5G. How do you want to hear from your father? Yes, you are born again. But how strong is your spirit? How strong is your line? But people who can who are not who can be spiritual can't receive these truths. If you are, if you don't have this, that's not me writing this. It's not what I've, it's not me synthesizing it. It all sounds foolish to them. They can't understand it. For so only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. So I'm going to end. So who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things. For they, we have the mind of Christ. To so have the mind of Christ means to have the spirit. Capital S. A life spirit. 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 One third of your running in life must be led by the spirit. Your spirit must dominate your carnal mind. Your carnality is your body. 
Your soul is your mind. And your capital S spirit is what gets saved. I yield the mic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you, Prophet Renita. Thank you, Apostle Takuita. Thank you. Thank you for releasing um, the grace of God upon your life through your daughters. Thank you. And thank you, Pastor Chris, for sharing that to us. Um, yesterday, yesterday's activation was for us to call and encourage someone to be used. The what the key word yesterday was to be used as instruments. And um, the activation for it was for us to reach out to someone, pray with someone, encourage someone, or send a voice note. How many of us did that yesterday? Because I'm about to release another activation, an assignment for us. Put on the chat if you did. Thank you, Steve Francesca. Thank you, Pastor Chris. I got a, a message from Pastor Chris, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Deborah. Thank you, Positive Creator. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Della. Come on now. If you did it, do it quickly and you're still in the room. Let me let me see how many people did. Thank you. Did you send a voice note or you sent a text? I asked for a voice note. So please define that for Mr. Ella. Come on, people. We've been accountable. Voice. Thank you, Brother Samuel. Five voice notes. Hallelujah. Voice notes and call. Thank you, sir. Ah, praise the Lord. Okay, sir, Lord, we need voice notes. Amen. Okay, Sister Joyce, thank you. Sister Joy, thank you for the voice notes. Um, and I hope the person that you sent a text to, you sent a voice note and a text. If you didn't, then please send a voice note. It's personal. We're activating our voices. Unless you're praying, you are speaking. You would be prophesying in the prayer. Called and prayed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I want I want to encourage us to do so. Um, it's amazing how I, I call so much that you don't know how you have just made my day. Um, we, 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 we are being instruments of blessing. You know, all of a sudden I'm just seeing Paul as the encourager. I know he called Barnabas son of encouragement, but I'm telling you, you know, the insight that we're getting um, from yesterday's uh, scripture that we read from First Corinthians, before he told them of, he encouraged them, he prayed for them. Um, so we need to activate that. And I really want to encourage you here, you're hearing me, or you're here and you came back in to listen to the replay and you played it long enough to hear what I'm saying now. Hallelujah. Um, please, let's make it a point of duty. That's how we will be keeping, um, you know, what has been activated here active or the activation of our voices, God using us to prophesy and, and be an encouragement to someone, pray for someone. We saw what was demonstrated. So please, let's do that. Let's um, let's do that. And that would be, um, that was yesterday's activation. So what is today's activation? Somebody asked me, what's today's activation? I need to hear a voice. Are you what interested today's, in what's today's activation? What's the foundation as the person. Okay. What is today's activation? Okay. Okay. So today's activation is for us to just open up our hearts. Don't pray any prayer. Lord, do that. Say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Do a silence day. I went to a retreat. I don't know if anyone, has anyone ever been had a silence retreat? Has anyone gone to a silence retreat? No. I haven't been. No. Okay, I haven't been, but I went to a retreat and I met a couple there and they said, oh, we're here for a silent retreat. And I was like, wow. Okay. Um, but, but even before that, I, I used to have days that I call listening days. Okay. So I want us to activate our listening or our hearing from the Holy Spirit. We talk to God too much. We don't give him time to hear or to speak to us. 
Um, and this is what's going to help us even with activation. So now how do we listen? Um, you can even leave the place silent to listen, or you can leave the word or leave a message. Um, keep your message um, on. Just keep something that you are listening to intentionally. And just open up your spirit, man, to receive. Can we do that? Yes. Can you repeat it, please? We're going to practice a listening day. Mama Deborah says, soaking in music and allow the spirit to teach, to speak. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us which means you talk less and allow him to speak more. Do I need to break it down further? Mm -hmm. Let me know, I, I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I get it, thank you. So we're saying, Holy Spirit, I'm going to practice a listening day. I need you to speak to me. And don't say, Holy Spirit, speak, 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 because we're still talking. When you ask someone to speak, it means you are quiet, okay? <laughs> if you don't know, speak, 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 speak. <laughs> We're still talking. But we're getting into a place where we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Because we've just talked about the Spirit of God. We have in the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit searching the mind of God, revealing, uh, verse 9 says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, um, and, and hearts have not perceived what the Lord has prepared for us, but it is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to allow the Holy Spirit, who already knows the mind of God, to reveal God's mind to us. The Bible says it's him that gives ears to hear and eyes to see. A gift from God. Eyes that see and ears that hear are a gift from God. So let's receive that gift. And then maybe you can come and share if you'd like to share um, what he spoke to you about or, you know, just really... Just let us know how that day went. Are we good? Did we get it? Let me get some response before we close the room today. It's all clear. Please just type yes. in the chat. Got it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, we're going to allow the Lord to speak. Yes, Lord. Yes. We're going to create atmospheres around us. I say, you're not speaking much today. said, no, I'm just listening. Hallelujah. So, Lord, thank you for those of us who are here. Thank you for what we're about to experience because you want to speak to us. Eli said to Samuel, the next time you hear that voice, say, speak for your servant, hear it. So I pray, Lord, that you help us to allow you to speak. And the Lord gave Samuel, who was a young man, a download of everything that was going on in the life of Eli. Everything that was he was even going to do. And the Bible says, not a word of Samuel fell to the ground. And he was going through an exercise to listen. Because God had birthed a prophet to the nations. Please, as he speaks, let's make a note of those things. You can make a voice note. 
you can write it down. But don't say, I'll remember. Write it down. Oh, I'll remember. Write it down. Hallelujah. Thank you. Prophet Renita, are you still here? Away, oh, yes. Thank you. Can you just pray into this verse, please, so that we can wrap up this session? And thank you, Pastor Chris, as well. Go ahead, Romana. Lord God, we just thank you uh, for this time. We thank you for what you're saying and what you've been doing in this time as well. We thank you, Lord God, that our hearts are just fortified and just resting in you, Lord God, resting in your presence, resting in what you're doing. We thank you for this time of activation. We thank you for this time of, uh, you know, even just shifting um, in intimacy with you, trusting you and having faith, Lord God, like never before for even as we will continue to do activations, Lord God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we shall uh, hear your your still small voice, Lord God, even as we will get silent in you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you would just cause heaven to reign like never before, heaven to come upon each and every place and just wash us, cleanse us, make us new. I thank you that you're even just causing your fire and the blood of Jesus Christ just to surround us, just to fortify us, Lord God. I even thank you, Lord God, that you will even just uh, cleanse any way, any backlash, side lash, lashing of the tongue of the enemy will try to come, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we're, you're, we're hidden in the shadow of your wings, Lord Jesus, even as we would uh, go about this day, even as some would rest on tonight, Lord God, and those who are uh, starting their morning in a shifted place. I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for each and everything that you're doing in every time frame, Lord God. And I just thank you for what you will continue to do, even as we will just rest and abide in you, Lord God. So I thank you for each and everything that you poured out on today. And thank you for the refreshing glory um, that is upon this shift. So I just decree and declare that it's already so in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. And